So I've got the middle bit and I have to be fast and because I'm Northern Imogen says that I'll manage it. So good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> My name is Jill Nuttall and I'm from Melanoma UK. Um, right, am I in charge of this? Do I do it myself? Is that the... Oh, okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a great big thank you to Imogen for putting on this conference today. Uh, I, I know how stressful this will have been and it's been uh, no mean feat and I think it's fantastic that she's managed to get so many people all like-minded and uh, all really, really interested in, in, in this subject and I'm really proud of you. So thank you again for inviting us to speak. Um, so I'm here to talk about the Melanoma Task Force, but before I do, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of background into our organisation and, and how we came to be, um, be in existence. Um, Melanoma UK actually dates back to 2002, and I don't know if anyone in the room is old enough to remember Elvis dying, but when we found out that John had melanoma, it was I remember exactly where I was sitting when he told me, and I don't know why I remembered that, because for me, it really wasn't that significant. And he said, you know that mole? It, it was melanoma. And I went, oh, okay. It was melanoma, and you've had it removed, and everything is going to be fine. Uh, little did we know at that point that this disease had the potential to become so serious. Uh, and I think that's something that still exists today, that people think that a mole can be cut away and you're going to be absolutely fine. And, and we heard this morning in a lot of cases it is, but a few cases that it isn't. And so move on then to 2006, and John was in the shower one morning, did this and this, and found a couple of lumps, went to see his GP and said, I'm really worried, I, I think I'm in trouble. The GP said, no, no, you're absolutely fine. So 24 hours later, John presented again and said to a different GP, I really do think I'm in trouble here. She had a look and said, yeah, I, I agree, I think you are. So at that point, he was a stage three patient. Move on a year then to 2007. It's exactly the same thing, and John relapsed and was a stage four patient. And at that time, there was very little available in, in melanoma. And the only thing that was available to him was a, a clinical trial, which was the Centacore trial, as I recall. And John said, I have to do it. I've got to go on this clinical trial because th th there's nothing else for me. So he agreed to go on the trial. And in the test that led up to the trial, it, it was established that the disease had actually spread to his brain. So that was it then. As far as John's treatment plan was concerned, it was temozolomide, a little bit of whole brain radiotherapy, uh, and, and that was it. So he faced saying goodbye to all his friends and family and everyone who loved him at an extremely young age. And I remember sitting there thinking, how can that be? How can we be in 2007 and these people are telling him that there's no cure for melanoma? So I started to do a little bit of research and a little bit of digging and I telephoned people in Australia, in America, in the UK. There's probably people in this room here that had emails from me in 2007 saying, hiya, can you help? And it was always a no, there's nothing that we can do. And, and sadly, John died in 2008, just after his 30th birthday. But just before that, I'd said to him, I'm going to do something. And he said, yeah, you do that. Because you know what? There's nothing for people in melan with melanoma. No one has ribbon days for people like me. There's no groups available. There's nothing at all. And I'm sure that throughout the UK, there were some people who don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> there were some people doing some, some great stuff in melanoma, just that we, we couldn't find it. So... And I said that I would, I would try to raise some money and, and raise some awareness of melanoma. And at this point, I always say, be careful what you wish for, because 10 years down the line and after a 25-year career in law, this is, is now my full-time role. But I, I'm very proud to do it, and, and it's great to be in, in, in contact with people like you every single day. So I'm here, really, to talk about the Melanoma Task Force, of which Melanoma UK is a founder member. And this all started back in about 2009, 2010. And we were approached by an agency that was working on behalf of BMS and said, we'd, we'd like to put a, a parliamentary task force together on, on melanoma. And um, so uh, Sean James MP began this. And she, what happened was she wanted to make some practical recommendations into the prevention and treatment of, of skin cancer, and in particular melanoma. And she wanted to find out how we could Im improve the services. And in October 2010, the task force published the first skin cancer visions document, which set out recommendations into melanoma services and how they could be improved. Following that, the Department of Health publicised their own 2015 skin cancer visions, which actually adopted 17 of the 25 recommendations that we as a task force had, had, had made. So we were quite proud of that. There are various organisations in the task force with Melanoma UK, a lot of whom are, are here with us today. And it's fantastic because we all have some, some very, very different skill sets, but we all work so well together, which I think really, really works as, a, as, a, as an organisation. 
Um, Pauline Latham MP is now the chair of. Am I doing this right? I am. Pauline Latham MP is now the chair of the Melanoma Task Force, and and we did a little bit of digging. We wanted to 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 to, to buttonhole an MP really that had some connection with melanoma, and we found that Pauline's brother had actually died of melanoma fairly young, so she was an obvious choice for us. And she's been very, very receptive to the work that we've done. And anyone who remembers ipilimumab going through NICE way back when, when it, the initial reaction from NICE was a refusal, we galvanised a number of patients, who, some of who are here today, to come down to Westminster, have a chat with Pauline. She arranged an evidence-giving session with other MPs, and the result of that was that, that, that NICE actually overturned that decision and ipilimumab became available. I like to think that was partly down to what, what we did as an organisation and, and certainly what, what patients and families did at, at, um, to help that along. So the future plans for the task force then. Um, the task Wait a minute, I've missed a little bit out here. Various projects that we've been involved with. Um, various projects, they're all available on, online and we've got some copies of them on, on our stand uh, over there. And f for me, one of the best ones to be involved with was um, the Equality in Melanoma Care Best Practice Pathway, which I was fascinated by this because there was a very, very strong group of people involved in this. And I was lumped in oncology. Don't even ask me why. I have no medical background at all, but I was I was told that I was going to be um, in a team with Dr. James Larkin and Dr. Paul Lorigan. Happy days for me, because I didn't have to do a thing. They just did it all, and it was, do you agree with that, Jill? Yeah, of course I do. I was hardly likely, likely to argue. So that was good, and I was particularly proud of being involved with that. So the future plans for the Parliamentary Task Force on Melanoma then, uh, we, we haven't met for a while, but we are planning a full task force meeting for later on this year. There has been a delay in the meetings because we've been waiting to um, confirm the availability of Kelly Palmer, who is the NHS National Cancer Director. And she's agreed to speak to the task force and details will be available about that meeting soon. She is the lead official for all cancer policy within NHS England and members of our task force will have the chance to lobby her directly. Also, make a note at this point, we're going to invite patients to that because I think that's really important that patients are there and, and they have a voice as well. So anyone who wants to be present at that meeting when, when we've got that sorted out, come and have a chat with us. I have a chat with all my colleagues who are here today from all the other organisations. Let us know if you'd like to be uh, at that meeting because we'd certainly lo love to have you there. Um, also at Pauline Lathan's request, we are pressing ahead with plans for a new treatment project and we've spoken to Dr Larkin, we're looking to see what information we can collect on uptake of the various drugs which are now uh, available, uh, now approved in, in melanoma. And what we want to try and do is to identify any variations which exist and areas where uptake is low. And we'll, following that, we'll then call for action to ensure all patients are receiving equitable access to drugs, which let's face it, that's why we're all here today. So there you go, I'm well ahead of time, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.